What's a monopsony? Monopsony, yeah? We've seen oligopoly, right? But now an opposite is monopsony. Oligopoly is when we have, uh, or monopoly, we have fewer sellers in the market. An oligopoly is like, you know, there are fewer sellers. Monopoly is like this one seller. An opposite, for every seller there is a buyer. There could also be fewer buyers in the economy. And in this case, uh, if we have just one major buyer, we say, hey, it's a monopsony. Or like there are very few buyers. Let's say you are a car company. Let's say General Motors. It's a very big buyer for, let's say, certain car parts. And similarly, if you have two or three such big car companies, they'll be like accounting more than 60% of that part that a part producer is gonna be selling to them. So as a buyer, you also have power like you have as a seller. A seller can be a monopoly. A buyer can also be a monopsony, which is like, hey, I can now get quantities of goods at a much lower price than a competitive price. So that's an important aspect that we should learn. So there are two things as we have now started to think from a buyer standpoint up until now we've seen from a seller standpoint. A buyer gets some value which represents by the demand curve or the marginal value MV. Yeah, this is the value that they get for a certain quantity of goods that they buy at certain prices. Let's say this is their demand, right? Or the marginal value that they get. And to get that value, they have to pay some money. And they would have, let's say, marginal expense that represents this line. And they would have an average expense or, you know, the supply. So, ME and AE, yeah? So, we had MR equals MC when it comes to sellers. Remember that, that's where we have maximum profit. Similarly, MV equals ME, the value that the marginally you get as a buyer is equal to the marginal expense. At this point, there is maximum profit for you as a buyer, yeah? So basically, every, at this point, if you look at this quantity, Q monopsonist, we get this quantity where the marginal value that you get is equal to the marginal expense. But if you were to go here, let's say, if I were to go here, you see my expense is greater than my value that I get. So I'm actually losing out. And that's why we see uh, this is not a good place for you to be. But if you go here, let's say, this is lost revenue. You could get so much more value and you, don't, you didn't have to pay as much for it, so you had this much lost value. So this is lost value, this is you are now eroding value. So this is the point where you have quantity that is gonna provide you with maximum profitability as a buyer. So at this quantity, what's the price? Then you look at where does it intersect the expense, the supply curve. That's where you get the price. You go here, you get price of a monopsonist, yeah? So look at that. You got a quantity where marginal value equals marginal expense. You got the quantity, you go up, hit the supply curve or, or the average expense curve, you get for this quantity, this is the price you will pay, yeah? Look at that. So now you are paying much lower price than what you would have paid if it was like a perfect, uh, competition situation where there are like hundreds of buyers so you as a buyer don't have then you would have had a clearing point yeah uh, where we start to see uh, prices that are much higher yeah so now we see we got the price that a monopsonist would, would uh, be willing to pay and we also see the quantity so they are able to now pay significantly lower price yeah when compared to either perfect competition where there are several of these uh, buyers around. So what do we get out of this? Yeah. So remember, if you were to plot the um, producer surplus and consumer surplus, so now we see this is our buyer surplus. Yeah, and this is our seller or who's uh, producing 
So you see, their, their surplus is significantly reduced. If let's assume this was the clearing price, we would have seen that uh, the producer surplus would have been much higher. Yeah. So monopsonists actually transferred this area back to the buyer, or in this case, the consumer. Yeah? So we see this uh, um, playing out. But remember, this again is the dead weight. Uh, as part of this, this would be the dead weight after the monopsonist comes in effect. And this whole thing would be dead weight. This area would be the buyer's surplus, much higher than the producer's surplus in a monopsonist situation. So remember, monopsonists are, when you have very few buyers, there is uh, less rivalry between them. And again, as you can imagine, this curve, the elasticity of marginal expense, average expense, has a huge impact. The higher, higher the elasticity, wherein the slope is much lower, you can start to see that the markup that you can get is going to be much lower. But if it's highly inelastic and has a much uh, steeper slope, you can now significantly buy at a much uh, lower discount. So that's the key thing to take away from monopsonist. Yeah? Um, like for monopoly and monopsonist, there are lots of regulations that can come in place. When one of these parties uh, gets a super high unfair advantage and there is an overall welfare cost associated, the dead weight cost associated is so high, then there are several parties uh, in the government who, uh, who would get access. Department of Justice has uh, uh, and uh, FTC. These are um, regulators who could, you know, file suit against these monopsonists or these monopolists and actually change the prices and can regulate them, can break them down, can sue them for uh, damages that either they are causing to the consumers or to the producers. So that's how the market remains in equilibrium. Yeah. So we understand monopsonists. We understand how the price is uh, based on marginal expense and marginal value uh, as the intersection of the demand curve and the quantity that this monopsonist will buy. They'll buy much lower than what they would have bought, but at a much uh, lower price and enjoy thus a much higher surplus at the expense of some dead weight cost associated with it. Yeah. So monopsonist, exactly opposite from a monopolist. Uh, which is from the seller's standpoint, not the you know, buyer's standpoint, because the buyers have a lot of power in certain situations, right? Monopolists. Yeah.